are listening to the Loving Your Own Soul podcast, and I'm your host, Britt Olson. Guided by my own intuition, my intention is to deliver genuine conversations centered around health and wellness, spirituality, self-expression, and culture. In this space, I will provide you with real-life stories, theories, and inspiring perspectives to help you uncover and tap into your own true potential. I'm so grateful you've chosen to tune in with me on this mindful exploration to living a more fluid life through a deeper connection to the soul. Now let's dive into today's journey. Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful Mother's Day weekend. I am sending so much love to all of the females from all walks of life on this beautiful planet. While Mother's Day is a joyous celebration for some, it can be equally hard on others who have had to endure differing life events surrounding motherhood and some of those events, unless you've been there yourself, you can't actually understand it. So definitely a beautiful time of year, sometimes not for others, but there is always a silver lining under the surface. So lots of compassion and loving energy being sent to everyone today and always. In particular, this episode today couldn't have actually timed out better because I have a very special guest. Diana Dragon is her name. She is a spiritual teacher and coach down in St. Petersburg, Florida. And what I love about this episode is that we're releasing it just after Mother's Day weekend. And it's very relevant because Diana's mom was actually a huge inspiration to her own spiritual journey and her current work in providing astrology chart readings. Diana actually helped me and did a full astrology chart reading with me, which was really cool. I had been playing around a little bit before and trying to understand my chart, understanding the north nodes, my rising ascendant sign. And Diana really um, just came in and did a fantastic job. She pulled my entire chart and then did, we did a little bit of the natal, but then our big, biggest focus with Diana's readings is kind of more of like a life purpose around your astrology chart. So we did a deeper understanding into myself, but what makes her reading so much different than other people's is that it really kind of felt like a mini life coaching session as well. It really provided such a deeper understanding of not only where I've been and where I sit today, but also for the areas that I either need to move through and release or other areas that I need to step in and empower in this lifetime. So that way I can really get the most out of everything that I'm supposed to. So it was so much fun. Um, fully enjoyed it. If anyone is looking to have their astrology chart done, I would highly recommend Diana. You'll see in this episode, she is just a wealth of knowledge. And for me, I just think astrology is such a cool thing. Um, I really enjoy studying all different theories and sciences, especially with human design. As some of you may or may not know what human design is, but I've found that in understanding your full astrology chart and focusing in on the north node and ascendant sign paired with then your human design is really just like this beautiful lens into who you are in this lifetime. Something as well that is kind of symbolic of the timing taking place right now is understanding your rising sign is something that really kind of sinks in and starts connecting about 30 years of age, which for me is right now and is also right on par with how I've been feeling this last year, just been feeling um, a little bit disconnected, kind of questioning, and I say this last year, really the last few years of my sun sign, which I had always kind of traditionally felt was what I was supposed to go by. And then upon understanding that my rising sign is really my soul in this lifetime and kind of who I grow to be right about now at this time of my life, it just really makes complete sense as I've really seen myself shift completely into embodying my cancer soul, which cancer is my rising compared to my sun sign Aries. So it was just, um, yeah, it's really cool. It just kind of pieces pieces everything together and we'll go through that in the episode as well. We chat through so that way everybody can have an understanding of your sun, moon, rising sign. Your moon sign is super fascinating as well in understanding the emotional side to who we are and your moon cycle is 
actually goes in tangent with your cycle and that when your menstrual cycle as females completely sinks in with the moon, it is a sign that we are finally on our life path in this journey of life. And for me, that actually just recently rehappened with this last full moon, which was just, again, the timing of it, so aligned, so many different connections right now, but just in seeing my cycle completely sync up with the moon cycles just gave me such confirmation that everything I'm doing is good and is correctly aligned as I continue down this super fun path. So anyway, so excited to share all of this information with all of you. Diana is just a wealth of knowledge. And yeah, she's just so tapped into other realms and her guides and channeling. You'll almost feel like you're on a different dimension in chatting with her. In fact, we really kind of kicked off the episode a little bit heavier than I usually do in that Diana started sharing some different channeled messages that she had been receiving from her guides. And then the Pleiadians came in to scope, which the Pleiadians are beautiful, beautiful creatures. For those who do not know, the Pleiadians are extraterrestrial beings or aliens, as some would say, but nothing to be afraid of. There is the Pleiades star cluster, which is believed to be distant cousins from us humans, and some of us actually carry their energy with us here in human form. And some of us um, are believed to have been part of the Pleiadians in other lifetimes of ours. So I know sometimes the term alien is a little bit uncomfortable for others. However, these star beings are nothing to be afraid of. So don't be alarmed if you've never heard this term before. Not surprised, but please know that it is completely safe. And if you do want to learn more, I would say the best place with some really factual and relevant information would be on the Gaia streaming network. However, we will also jump into them as well here in this episode so you can get a little taste for what we are talking about. Yeah, I think that's really it. I really don't have too much to say. I'm just really excited to jump in here with Diana. She is so gifted and She just does so many different acts of service throughout her daily life, as you will learn. And one of her biggest acts of service in the world is really helping women to tap into their true purpose and working with them throughout that journey. Diana even co-founded a space called the Goddess Space in St. Petersburg, which has now taken a bit of a virtual route as well. She founded the space with her soul sister, Kate, in which through this space, they support women in their transformations to finding their inner goddesses and purpose. Uh, The goddess space, they actually just started a membership program, which is pretty cool. It's relatively cheap. I think it's around $20 right now, actually probably uh, $22, I believe, if I'm correct there. So if any women are interested in joining, they host monthly goddess circles, full moon ceremonies. They have a private Facebook group and really just provide sisterly support to one another along with weekly journaling prompts and meditations and a toolkit. They're really just doing so many great things to help women tap into their inner goddesses and the female energy and just trying to hold kind of an honored space for deeper connection. And with that, I have been so blessed to be able to connect with Diana and share this spiritual deep dive with all of you. So it's time to get into all things astrology, downloads, messages from our intuition and higher power, different dimensional realms, and even the experience of diving into our divine feminine or masculine powers throughout this lifetime. You guys are in for a treat. But there is a lot of information shared, so if anyone has any questions, definitely please feel free to message me or even comment on my latest Instagram post, and I will get back to you if you are confused or seeking more information or connect with something new that you've never heard of today. It's going to be a lot of fun. And as always, thank you for tuning in with me on your journey. In thanks as well for anyone who feels called to rate and review this podcast, I will be sending you my brand new plant-based recipe ebook in exchange. As some of you may know, ratings and reviews are really crucial to helping podcasts grow and inspire more individuals. So all you have to do is simply rate and review, screenshot it, and send me the proof 
at lovingyourownsoul at gmail.com. And then in exchange, I will send you my recipe ebook, which I know you are going to love. As well, for the month of May, if you rate and review and send me proof by May 31st, I will also enter you into my podcast launch giveaway in which I am giving away a huge gift basket filled with some of my favorite brands, including samples from Four Sigmatic, Pure Veda Bracelets, Hum Nutrition, Liquid IV, Athletic Greens, so much. There's so much good stuff in this gift basket. So all you have to do, again, is just rate and review the podcast, send me proof to lovingyourownsoul at gmail.com, and I will enter you into the giveaway in addition to sending you my free plant-based recipe ebook. So you really cannot go wrong here. And like I said, all it is is simply my gratitude for you And my thanks because your ratings and reviews are truly what will propel the success of this podcast to reach more ears and in effect, inspire more people. Speaking of inspiration, let's jump into today's journey. Now, before we jump into today's episode, I do want to give a shout out to Four Sigmatic, which I'm actually drinking their ashwagandha coffee blend right now. I love to drink it with frothed cashew milk. For those who know me, frothed milk is something I've loved for a very long time. And cashew milk is officially my number one, especially with Four Sigmatic's products, which truly make the coziest of beverages out there. Four Sigmatic Foods are the 100 most nutrient-dense, most studied foods on the planet, and they've created them so they're easy to add into your daily routines, making them so easy to not only eat, but talk about and share with your friends and family. They've created so many amazing powders built with a variety of mushrooms, including chaga, reishi, lion's mane. They even have skincare products, which I've tried their face masks. And not only are the masks edible, but they truly smell like you have brownie batter on your face. Unlike brownie batter though, they leave your skin purified, fresh, soft, and new. And aside from the beauty line, they carry an array of elixirs that I drink daily from chaga mushroom, cacao mixes, matcha lattes, chai tea mixtures, and even protein powders now. For those of you who are interested in trying some yourself, I have a link posted in the show notes where you can receive $15 off your first order from them. So when we are done here today, or even right now, head over to the show notes, check out Four Sigmatic. I promise you are going to fall in love with their products just like I did. Thank you for coming on to do a podcast episode with me. I'm so excited just to kind of chat with you. I feel like you have so much. You're just like a wealth of so much information and just your energy and connecting with you. I love it. I feel like we're so connected as well. It's so funny, especially like the past week, our communication (laughs) has been like totally on the same page. It's been so funny. (laughs) Totally agree. Thank you for having me. I am honored to be here and I am so honored that you asked me to be part of your energy and part of your uh, podcast and your sacred space. So I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, One of the things I was thinking about earlier today is our relationship and how we first met in January at Awakening Wellness Center doing the vision board activity that you guys hosted. And then we really just kind of stayed connected like through social media and messaging. And then you did my astrology reading. And it's just so cool how these connections can kind of intermingle online and then even more relatable right now while we're going through COVID and just how we're kind of all relating, relying on the internet and virtual connections and everything. And I was just thinking about it today and I was like, wow, it's so, so cool how just in a few quick months, um, our relationship has just really strengthened and totally Mm -hmm. virtual as well. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And you know, what I noticed is that it hasn't happened only with, yeah, like, for example, you and me, it's been happening to me in my life. Mm -hmm. And Uh, with a lot of other people sorry that's what I was thinking Um, and 
you know, I actually received a message from one of my guides and we'll probably go into that for yeah. people to understand more. But the message was that right now we, I personally am meeting the souls that basically we will end up leading together um, in love, you know, for this beautiful new earth that we're creating. Hmm. and right now that is the energy that is happening and that is what I am attracting attracting in my life is this because I'm meeting a lot of like-minded souls and I don't know if you have felt that but obviously because mm-hmm. you just said and that is what they told me and I was like oh, it makes a lot of sense hmm. so much sense it's so hmm. cool I think it's funny too because probably like maybe a year ago, maybe less than a year ago, I've just had a sense of feeling really overwhelmed by social media and just kind of like, oh, this is taking over my life and like power of the internet and email and just so much. Whereas now I feel so much more kind of like grounded and connected with it and understanding its true purpose of why higher powers put it here and us here in our lifetime to experience it and our ability to really connect and just like expand our souls with it totally um I did feel the same way that though at the beginning and Mm -hmm. I felt like I was getting lost in it I I needed to take about about every weekend or every other weekend off of social media because I felt like um it's taking over my life and it's taking over uh who I am and my identity and I was getting so lost in it yeah um a lot of people felt the need to speak up a lot of people felt the need to come out just like I did as well and we were getting lost in that like I was getting lost in that so like you said I needed to find that grounding space and coming from a place of authenticity all the time and I think that's those breaks were really needed for me to be able to show as my authentic self all the time you know Mm -hmm. Uh, I totally agree recently actually it's been almost a month I think since I've posted a physical post Mm -hmm. and it's just every time I go to do it or schedule something I can't do it so I'm like okay Mm -hmm. I'm going to honor that. Um, and has my social media has been a lot of just like direct messaging and stories and so much communication without the actual posting, which is another interesting transition. Even though I think I'm ready to start posting again this week, I've just, the energy feels really positive around that, which I'm excited to start doing that again, <laughs> but it's been interesting. I feel the same. The energy is just shifting right now, like literally from two days ago. (laughs) Yeah. Gotta love technology. It certainly is a huge part of our life, that's for sure. But speaking of life, you play a big role in a lot of women's lives and have a really cool background. Would you like to go ahead and jump in and give folks a few key pointers about your wonderful self? So yeah, um, my name is Diana and last name is Dragon. I don't know a lot of people like think that's not my not my real last name but it actually is um i'm i'm romanian so uh, my last name means deer actually like oh. like a deer person um not the animal but also it's very close to dragon like the name even in romanians in romania so um i love my last name everybody wants my last name too it's so cool <laughs> thank you so i uh, do astrology um that's how you know we connected deeper i think mm-hmm. through your astrology uh, doing your astrology chart um i like to approach astrology from a different perspective though and i like to go deeper into life purpose i love to go deeper into the north node and actually tapping into uh, the person's life purpose and helping them understanding that how important is knowing what you're supposed to do and how the tendencies from past life can affect you into not doing your life purpose in this life. I also channel different archangels. My main guide has been Archangel Metatron, uh, who I'm very connected with and very dear to my heart. And recently I started to channel um, the High Council of Pleiades. And, you know, we can go deeper into that too, if you want. <laughs> yes, I actually had, I had a um, some energy work done 
maybe the beginning of April, I think. And the Palladians came in during that session and we channeled and spoke a little bit with them. So yeah, I would love to go into that. Um, I have some Palladian energy that sits through me and everything like that. So I'm not surprised by that. I think it's, that's why we are so connected and that's why we reconnected right now because mm-hmm. I recently started to connect it with connecting with them. And I do know that I am um, Palladian. I do know that I originally come from the seven dimension. I was told in a reading um, it's very hard for me to believe it, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but um, I try to trust them when they told me that, but I know I'm, I'm kind of joking, but I do feel the connection with the Palladians very strongly and I can, I can see why, yeah, I can see why we're connected now. Yeah. Thanks. It's so cool. Like full body chills. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, for those listening who may not be super familiar with the Palladians and light energy, do you want to give just kind of quick little overview? Even though that could really be its own episode. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's true, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so the Pleiades is a constellation. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't done much research in it either. Yeah. Um, like very deep but I do know from my understanding there's seven planets and the Pleiadian energy so basically these beings the Pleiadians they are higher dimensional beings that are here to support us and assist us in this transition um you know ever since I found out that I am Pleiadian which for me was very interesting to hear because I never considered myself anything than, you know, like a human, you know, does that make sense? Totally. I feel like same. And then when I heard that in a way, it almost made a little bit of sense of like, okay, I feel that I don't like physically feel that, but something inside of me feels that even though previously I never, never resonated that way. never really understood extraterrestrials or anything like that. So as like for me as a as a little girl, I was mm-hmm. very afraid of that. Um, and I remember like people would joke or like kids would joke, "Oh, let's look at the stars and maybe we'll see a new UFO." And I would be like, "I don't want to see one." <laughs> like I am, I was terrified, and I and I have, I still have to tap into finding out why. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now I'm just more open to that. So I think that's why they just showed up now because they didn't want to in a way scare me and you know for the past five years I've been in contact with Archangel Metatron who's been guiding me Mm -hmm. and now they just came in ever since coronavirus started and the way they came through was through my higher self which is very interesting so they didn't even come and say I am you know we are the high council of Pleiades no so my higher self came and she said let's go home Um, and this was like, like a month ago or something. So I said, okay, well, you're my, you're my higher self. I'll trust you. I mean, I trust most of the time because I know how to tap into the energy if it's negative or, and so she took me and she said, this is Pleiades. And I looked around and it looked so familiar. And it's funny because I've been there in different meditations, like with Metatron or different archangels. And I was like, oh my God, I recognize this place. And she said, yeah, we are in on Pleiades. And then I saw this beautiful amethyst pyramid that was not very high, like we would have our pyramids in Egypt, but I would say about four, five feet tall. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of like a, it could be like a house or just like a, you know, a few people could be there. And, but it was all amethyst like a lavender amethyst wow almost see-through and people would go there for like prayers or healing or something and then I did see Palladians walking there like it's literally like I was physically there which is amazing <laughs> now I'm like oh my god it's probably I might have been physically there it's so um, cool I know yeah so it's cool. really beautiful and then um, so they they look very much like us. They're just lo- taller and slender, mm-hmm. um, bigger eyes. So I always thought that I have big eyes. No, they have way bigger eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so 
um yeah so that that was how the initial thing and then she told me her name yeah she told me her name so like my higher self told me her name in Pleiades and she's known as Andalusia and I was like well that's such an interesting name yeah um the funny thing is I told my mom about it and she said I've heard that name before <gasps> and I was like you did <laughs> she said yeah I think it's some something like I've heard it I was like okay <laughs> So that was the first encounter. And the second encounter, they just came through and they said, we are the high council of Pleiades of seven. And it's interesting because there are seven planets in the constellation. Mm -hmm. And they used to, I believe that they used to say they're the seven sisters or the seven, yeah, the seven I think sisters I've heard of that. Pleiades or the seven goddesses of Pleiades. So I have goosebumps. <laughs> Same, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and... um so I said, okay. So then I look around and there were not only women, there were men too in this council, but I see, and I count six and I said, oh, you're saying seven, but I see six. And then I pop in like, as my higher, my higher self comes and she said, I'm the seventh. And I'm like, oh my God, it makes sense. <laughs> and that was the most beautiful message I've got gotten recently from them explaining how, um, I don't know if you saw it, I posted on my Instagram um, but everybody who listened to it, they either told me they had tears or goosebumps or they felt the whole thing. I don't and think they, I've seen that yet. I'll have to go back and watch after this. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I am mean, I can send it to you too. Um, but they basically told me how we as human beings need to understand that we are all higher dimensional beings, that we are not three-dimensional beings as soul level and we're all higher dimensional beings that we signed a contract that we decided to come support earth on its healing and raising the vibration of earth back to its fifth dimensional you know being and self and us raising our vibration from the third dimension but the reason why we chose to do that is it was out of love for earth and you may have known about the clarion call right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so it's when that happened you know there were those those souls like you know i'm sure like you like me that when we we saw physically earth being destroyed Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that I, I, I have a very vivid memory of that and it hurt so bad that I was like, I'm going to, to help. Like whatever happens, I know if I can do it, I'm going to go and do it. And there were apparently were 144,000. But what they said is, I want you to understand what sacrifice you did. The sacrifice to go from maybe a seven dimension, even a fifth dimension or fourth, to drop down to third dimension and to accept the fact that you will go in a wheel of karma for like thousands of years just out of love for Mother Earth, for Mother Gaia, just out of love for humanity. And when they said it from that perspective, I said, do you realize that you made that choice and we didn't? Wow. You, you, when you made that choice, we made the choice to be your guides and support you. That's amazing. Right? At that moment, they said, you sometimes, you humans don't realize your actual power because you, you know of what we've been taught to believe and all that. But that was a choice that you made out of love. And you did not come on the planet to go and pick up the garbage from uh, the ocean. You came here to connect to the vibration of love, to teach humanity the vibration of love, and go in a higher dimension through love, through the vibration of love, because that's how we, you know, raise our vibration, through love. Right. Oh, my and, gosh. Right? <laughs> What like an act of service too. It almost, it puts it together and it makes so much sense as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, I know. 
it's it was it was, for me I, when I listen and yeah I just you know just go to my Instagram and and listen to the whole thing. But when they told me, I started crying, and I just had so much compassion for my human self for not understanding what the, exactly like you said like an act of service I did to the planet and for humanity and not only me but all of us and you know for them to say we did not choose this you chose that yeah we chose to be your guides we chose to support you from the perspective of a seven dimensional being because you will need they you know obviously you will need that support and for us sometimes you know how us as humans get freaked out when we have this and you know, like when Metatron came through for me, I was like, I'm crazy. I'm freaking out. And instead of connecting to that and trying to understand it, we try to escape it. Yeah. You know, you know how hurtful is for them because they made, they made a commitment to us to support us. And at the same time, they understand the free will. They understand we're slower and so on. Yeah. But you know, if people are listening right now, I really would love to invite everybody. If you feel like, if you hear stuff in your mind, that is a message. That is your intuition. That might be your guide. You know, it's not that we're going crazy. It's not that we are talking to ourselves. No, that is intuition, guidance, you know, Pleiadians, your (laughs) angels, (laughs) angels. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. How, when you um, first started channeling and receiving messages and everything like that, was there anything you did or any experience that kind of helped you start trusting it? Because it's really interesting how mm-hmm. I think collectively the first reaction is crazy or like, yeah. oh my gosh, stop. Like we try to push it away and then it takes time and an opening to start kind of being able to receive and trusting what comes through. You know, when you just said that, what came to me is women are the ones who think are crazy Mm. and not men. And I was just thinking about my husband when he was getting messages, he never questioned or he wasn't thinking he's crazy. Yeah. So the reason why women think that we are crazy is because we were, if we have been told we're crazy for so many eons, right? So many. (laughs) When we say what we want or what we need, we are told by men that we're crazy. Mm-hmm. So, and then that goes back to the times when we were burnt on stakes for having, you know, supernatural powers or for being able to communicate with, you know, our angels and guides and star beings. So it makes sense why we would, we would think that like naturally, right? Totally. I actually just started reading, you might've heard about it, but it's called Untamed. It's a book by Glenn and Doyle. About it. It is so good. It's a page turner. Her way with words is amazing, but she talks going through just all different areas of really how women, we society, and you know, we really tell ourselves that to be the perfect woman is to be quote unquote selfless versus Mm -hmm. actually doing what we want and tapping into our power. And it talks about her whole journey and it just resonates such truth across the board. And she just has such a such an energy about her words and everything. Definitely. You should jump into it. Um, it's super good. But with that, with your tra- channeling and guides and everything like that, when did you, when did you start maybe trusting or what did you do differently? Yes. Thank you for <laughs> that. I, for, I was like, you know, I, you know me, I will go from one okay. to another. So you have to remind me. <laughs> but yeah, no, when you said that, it really made me realize, you know, what we just talked and Um, it's actually the first time that I just put two and two together. So thank you for that. Um, I may have to write in my journal about this um, and make a post about it maybe. But yeah, so five years ago, um, you know, I used to work on cruise ships. Five years ago, I decided to, um, to stop that life. It was tough. It was beautiful. We were traveling a lot, but it was tough life. Um, working a lot. So we were flying from me and my husband were flying from New Zealand to LA. And on that flight, I was like falling asleep. And actually, I started writing my book. And I have this whole information in my book, too. So I'm excited about when that's going to come out. But 
So I was, um, I was like in between falling asleep and awake, you know, that, that state when you are not asleep, but you're not awake either. I saw this, like, it's like I was on in, in the sky. I was like with like there was clouds around me and then I just see this outline of a man coming towards me and it was kind of shiny around him but it was like a dark outline right and I'm like okay and I felt the energy like so much love and it felt like literally like my husband so I thought it's him so I'm like oh you know Justin is his name so we're like meeting in the in our dream he's like oh no uh, I'm not Justin but you can call me Justin if you want to <laughs> <laughs> and then I said, well, I mean, if you're not Justin, who are you? And then I'm starting to freak out because I'm like, okay, I'm not meeting my husband in my dreams, but what is this? So he said, I am Metatron and I came here to bring you a message. And he told me something that I think I, I think I wrote in my book. I, I don't remember everything though mm -hmm. uh, right now, but it wasn't like something crazy. So I said, okay well I've never heard of Metatron in my life before I would I knew some I just started tapping a little bit into different archangels but I'd never heard of Metatron before mm -hmm. so I wrote down in my phone and I I looked him up and after two months it took me to find him because I wrote the name a little different and then I found him and ever since then what I had to do as that was probably what you you know you want me to tell a lot of people have problems with that because you know you get into that contact and then you are like rejecting it and you're like I don't want that or you're trying to get back to that and you don't know how right yeah so what what I had to do is I, I tried to go into meditations and for me um, maybe going back now I wouldn't have done it that way but what I did is I was listening to music and meditating on music, nothing guided. So for a person who just starts meditating to do that, I can tell you it's very tough. The first reaction was I cried, then I felt anger, then I wanted to, uh, I didn't want to do it again. I I just wanted to quit, like quit meditation altogether. I didn't care about any archangels or nothing. I just didn't want to do it anymore because it was just so hard. Mm-hmm quiet my mind especially for us women I think it's very hard to quiet our minds so I just had to continue doing it for me my husband was inspiring me because he would go in meditation and he would come with messages and because he does too like he he is connected with Metatron too hmm. um and he receives messages from him and other archangels that we're both connected to um and I would be like but I'm not getting anything and so all I had to do is continue and trusting that when I'm ready, I'm going to get back into contact with him or back in contact with other beings. And ever since, I think after a year, I started started being um, reconnecting with him and others. And after two years, I was a clearer channel. And now it's been four or five years. And I can say that now I can close my eyes and I can call him and he is right next to me. And you've experienced with me, like mm -hmm. I receive messages as we talk. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. beautiful. It's so yeah. cool. I love it. Such a special soul for sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You mentioned earlier when we were talking about the Pleiades, your mom, how she was kind of connected as well. And I believe if I'm getting the story correct, your did your astrology journey, did that kind of start from inspiration with your mom? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So my mom has uh, started doing astrology in 2000. So like 20 years ago. And, you know, being in Romania and her starting something like that, um, it was pretty crazy because a lot of people would say that she's like reading in stars. And even my dad was not never on board with that. Are um, your parents still in Romania? I don't think I ever They asked. are. Yeah. They are. My dad passed in two years ago, but my, mm -hmm. my mom is still there. Basically, I was raised with astrology books in my hands. I remember, you know, when I was 15, 16, and I was like in love with a, <laughs> with one of, you know, the boyfriends I had or whatever, <laughs> um, I would just go to my mom and be, mom, are we compatible? <laughs> 
and she would literally give me books to read and then she would create like a synastry which is like um uh, putting you like for example putting your chart and your husband chart on top of each other and mm. that can show like how like co- the compatibility but also like when you had past lives together the tendencies from past lives and so on so that is um how i i was raised and then she would like do that and then she would give me the information to read she wouldn't tell me yes you're compatible or oh i guess you had the past like she just give me the information to read and i would just like study and study and i would want more and more <laughs> it's it's so interesting once you get into it it's almost kind of like a a contagious like learning of information where you're just like give me more please I remember I used to do that with boyfriends and things not to the depth that you did but just an understanding their sign and being like oh okay me being an Aries like is Aries and a Sagittarius compatible and if it said like no I'd be like okay I don't even think I want to like waste my time on this person (laughs) That's so funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's so funny how it starts. How did your um, journey since then kind of evolve in doing readings for other people? And it really kind of passioned a purpose in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's it's been a very, very interesting journey, definitely. So when I stopped working on cruise ships, I decided that I want to, to help people. And um, one of the things that I've struggled with all my life was with my weight. So I decided that I want to help people, you know, get in shape and become a personal trainer or some kind of health coach. But I went with, you know, the certification of a personal trainer. So I've been a personal trainer for the three, the last three years. I still do it and I love doing it, but it's such a masculine energy job that I had to pull myself out of it to be able to tap deeper into my my feminine energy and my spiritual you know abilities Mm -hmm. Um, because being a trainer not only takes that masculine energy okay let's go five more you got this you know (laughs) but it's also the support that you give to people so I used to like support people and coach them And literally, I used to work from 5 a.m. until 1 p.m. Every half an hour, a different client. Wow. So literally, some days I had 20 20 people, one after another, sometimes with like only half an hour break, sometimes no break. So it just got to the point where I was just done. And I was just like, I need to leave or I need to like have less of that. So after that, I realized that I want to take, you know, my spiritual journey more serious and want to tap deeper into my knowledge. So while at the beginning I would go into a meditation and one time I would receive a message and it could be a month later that I would receive another message. Mm -hmm. Now it got to the point where I could connect so deep that, you know, I could ask questions. I could ask questions for other people. And one of the most powerful things that have happened with me for my own healing was tapping into past lives while in meditation, you know, alongside with my guide Metatron or others, but mostly was Metatron, yeah. Mm -hmm. The past life work is so fascinating. And it just, you know, since doing the little bit on mine, it's brought such clarity and such a deeper understanding to certain tendencies of mine and looking at relationships and how I handle myself. In a way, I found as well that it kind of strips away a lot of my self-judgment, where instead of getting different societal messages and kind of judging the way I should or should not be, so to say, but now understanding like, oh, those tendencies could be from a past life or like, this is why it just brings such a secured understanding. And I really think, again, a lot of the self-judgment, whether I was consciously or unconsciously doing it, it's slowly just kind of shed it away. And it's been really freeing. That's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. I actually wanted to ask you how you feel, you, how you're feeling and how have you integrated your session with me, you know, after we talked about all that. Totally. Well, in addition as well, like an added level of confidence as well. 
as it's kind of, as you know, we spoke, I'm in a little bit of a, I wouldn't say a career change, a career shift, so to say. And it's given me that confidence of kind of similarly actually to channeling and receiving messages in the fact of like the things that I want or aspire or drawn to. Again, I'm not quote unquote crazy for thinking or having my interests in that way. It's actually an innate part of who my soul is in this lifetime and that kind of honoring those tendencies and maybe exploring a little bit further into certain areas that I wouldn't have explored before, or maybe I would have like dipped my toe, but wouldn't have fully jumped in. So it's just, yeah, it's just opened up so much. It's been so beautiful. It's one of those things that now I'm like, everyone needs to have a full reading done because it's so great. (laughs) I agree. Thank you. Yeah, I think I think it's kind of like a confirmation, you know, you kind of know it in your soul. Mm-hmm. And there's like this major confirmation that just opens your eyes to really receiving and allowing your intuition that's been telling you all that to just be like, okay, now I'm listening to you. Okay, now I trust you. <laughs> Exactly. It's kind of like that realigning with your intuition of like, okay, you've got yeah. my back. I'm going to trust you. Mm-hmm. Now let's, let's do this thing. Yeah. yeah. And I think that you, you know, that what you were saying earlier is kind of a compassion for yourself, mm-hmm. realizing you've been through so much and yes. all these lifetimes you like had to overcome all this craziness. And you're just, I remember I had like lots of meditations that I just started crying out of compassion for my own soul. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) So much compassion. It's so cool. And compassion as well for relationships too. Like Mm -hmm. those sisterly bonds, bonds with your parents, bonds with your loved ones, where you've always felt that like, I think we've been connected previously and understanding that you more than likely were connected previously as well. It's like, a heightened feeling of love. It's yeah. So cool. For yeah. those who aren't as familiar, who are listening, um, kind of like baseline is starting with like your sun, moon, and rising sign. Do you want to maybe give just a little bit of detail on kind of what each of those three signs is or maybe reasons yeah. to look at them? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, definitely is very important like you know your sun is important because that makes you you know you makes you areas makes me libra but like i you know we've talked about that so much more to that than than just your sun then your moon is kind of like your soul um in terms of um emotions you know like your moon is kind of guiding your emotions and us as women are very connected with the moon cycles as well like our cycle is connected to the moon cycles and once the cycle is in sync with the moon cycle then we know we're actually on the right path with our whole like life path journey which is really cool and that's a whole another episode (laughs) but if you want I can talk a little bit about that too yeah totally yeah Uh, whatever uh, you're feeling definitely or, yeah, before I say that, I'm, I already forgot what you wanted me to, to mention. Oh, yes. So the moon, see what I'm saying? The moon, um, it's kind of like dry, the driver of our emotions and like guidance of our emotions. And then the rising sign is the sign that you kind of become once you pass 30 years. So once, once you get, until you are... 30 you're more your sun than your rising or ascendant some people call it um i grew up with it being an ascendant and now i found out you know in in the states they call it rising sign but um your rising sign becomes more of your soul and who you are like essence as you pass 30 and you're more connected with your rising than your sun and then your north node which i like to work the most Um, So basically we have North Node and South Node. Your South Node node would be what your past life was and what you had to do and overcome in your past life to kind of move to the next level. And the next level is this life and this life is your North Node and that whatever your North Node falls into, that's your life path. 
The North yeah. Node, I think, is one that is so, so interesting. Would you say is North Node what you look into the strongest? Yeah. yeah. It's the first thing. I mean, like, you know, for people who are interested to know what they're doing. And then, you know, honestly, like, to at this point, when some people are telling me they're struggling, the first thing I think is you're probably not doing your life, <laughs> your life lesson. And that is the thing about North Node. And you know, I, I sometimes feel like people already should know that, but no, they don't. And I have to reiterate that. Once you understand your life path, you it's hard sometimes to do it because it's literally against everything you have done in your past life. So like, for example, you know, we talked about mine, right? I have North and Aries. So my life path is about taking care of myself, putting myself first, and then helping others. Because in my past life, I dedicated my life to helping others. Mm -hmm. So you better believe that when, when I was like, you know, in high school, if a girlfriend of mine would call me and say, I need you, I would stop everything and go to like, save her. Mm -hmm. Save the, you know, earth. Like literally, I'm saving everybody <laughs> on earth. <laughs> so um now it's like once something is going on wrong in my life I have to check myself and be like you know how am I not putting myself first again like how am I not taking care of myself oh I'm working like 14 hour days obviously I'm not putting myself first and all those things so once you are in the flow with your life purpose everything flows in your life your career flows in your life your life you're you're just you have this contentment always of course we're always gonna have ups and downs but mm -hmm. overall you're connected with gratitude you're connected with compassion love when you don't do what you're supposed to do you feel like life is hard you feel lost you know how you feel like you forget things not because there's too much that you want to do but you forget them because you don't want to think about them Yes. That is when people are not doing their life path. That's what's happening to them. You just kind of like blur it out and you're just kind of like spaced out and like a zombie. That is how people who are not living their life path leave. That makes so much sense. And I, I have been there. So <laughs> I know how it is. I was. Me too. Almost feeling like I was forcing something in my own life as if I was kind of like trying to force myself to walk down this path that deep down I knew wasn't congruent for me, yeah. but it was like, just go, like you're supposed to do this and mm -hmm. didn't work out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Needless to say in yeah. the North nodes, we had spoken about, I think it is, is it attributes like things to develop and things to leave behind? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that's what I found like the most efficient to do with people because just going through all of those. So we go through the attributes to develop, which are the things that you should enhance in your life and the things that you should keep doing if you're doing them or if you're not doing them, we have to like stop, start doing them. And there's like simple things, you know, for me looking at, um, at the life, like, dedicate your life for others. I'm like, oh yes, I can do that. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> but then for me it would be something like, um, realize that being selfish is not a bad thing. And that sometimes you have to put yourself first. And I would be like, oh God. <laughs> impossible. So yeah, impossible. <laughs> so we go through each individual and what I like to do is like literally ask the person like I was doing with you right ask you how does that resonate with you right now and you know we just go you know sometimes we stay on one for 30 minutes you know totally until we, yeah until we figure it out and really tap into exactly where we need to go and what you're supposed to do next definitely one of my tendencies to leave behind was the constant seeking of others approval and that was one that resonated with me so hard because I feel like not that I've been someone that's been I need to be the star of the show type person but everything I did was always had an underlying need of approval from somebody else whether it was my parents or a boss or even in my stages of doing event planning and event management and a lot of approval comes out of that and as of lately that had been one that I was trying 
to leave behind before getting my chart done. And then upon having my chart done and under, understanding that, I was like, yes. And then kind of like understanding that that was something I should leave behind in this lifetime also gave me another just wave of reassurance of like, okay, we can, we can let this go. Like together, we've got this. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, when you know that you're, I mean, your intuition was telling you to do it, you're working mm -hmm. on it. And then you heard me saying the same thing. And that's when the confidence, now you're just going fearless with what you're feeling and what your intuition is telling you, because you know, you don't have to, you know, pretty much care about what other people are saying. So that's exactly. Good. Have you ever done any charts with someone who maybe hasn't resonated with it at all? Or it was almost like they were living so out of alignment. It was hard for them to accept like the path that they should be on, so to say. No, I've no. never done like everybody that I've talked to understood and it resonated with them is just that some people I did have, for example, a friend of mine that I did it for her and it's because she was too young or younger. Mm. Um, it was just very hard for her to really understand certain things deeper. And now um, recently, I think I did it for her like a year ago or two years ago. And recently she came to me and she said, thank you because now I'm rereading it and I understand it differently. Mm. And I forget sometimes to tell people, but some, you know, you need to reread that throughout your life. I reread my North Node every time I kind of feel like I'm going out of alignment. Mm -hmm. And I find stuff that I knew, but somehow I read it in a different way or resonates with me in a different way because I'm at a different level of understanding. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you think is there an age that's or an age range that's better than others to get your chart done? I think you should you should do it as early as you can, mm -hmm. but reread it. Um, mm -hmm. So I, you know, my mom told me about mine when I was 17 years old. I didn't care about anybody else. I mean, I didn't care about myself. I only cared about everybody else. And my mom just like had to remind me like, hey, you know, you have to like put yourself first. You have, and I'm like, mom, you know what? I don't know how to do that. Just like leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So at 17, I was just like, you know, I'm living my life. Like, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I remember telling her, I do not, I, I just, I just don't know how. And I had to reread it and I had to like, um, it took me, I think I was 23, 26, mm -hmm. 27, 26, maybe, maybe when I left the cruise ship. So about like, 26 27 when I really said no more you know I really need to focus on who I am what I am you know and and I believe that's why also Metatron showed up then mm -hmm. because I was ready to say no more I'm putting myself first I'm gonna do what I'm here to do I know I have I felt like I have an important mission my husband the same and we felt like okay we gotta do something and we're going to put ourselves first. He has the same North Node as I do. So you can imagine. Oh, interesting. What a tough life that is. <laughs> yeah. Hey, how are you Two Aries. Today? Yeah. Well, how are you feeling? <laughs> well, do you want to do that? Well, do you want to do that? Because if you do, I'll do it for you. <laughs> it was so tough at the beginning. <laughs> But now we are just, um, yeah, we are both understanding as, as we get older, we understand it deeper and deeper. So I think the earliest you can do it, do it. Give the message to the understanding that you have it at that age and continue to grow with that. As you age, you will understand it deeper and deeper and you will connect with it deeper as you move through life. I love that. It yeah. makes so much sense, especially for me when I look back. I had always, so I'm an Aries son, was I always felt a little bit conflicted as I got older with being an Aries and that just some of the um, tendencies of what represents an Aries, I felt like wasn't truly me anymore. So mm -hmm. upon understanding that my ascendant, my rising was a cancer, it was like, ah, that makes so much more sense. And it was like, okay, because before I just almost felt a little bit conflicted internally of this is quote unquote how I should be, but this just isn't entirely representing the true me anymore. So 
I would agree with yeah. that entirely. Yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, totally. And yeah, it's information that I think everybody should have and understand, you know, mm -hmm. because you can get lost in that. Like you said, you can get lost in, you know, your identity in a way. Mm -hmm. What is and, your um, feeling with horoscopes, like ones that are put out in the newspaper, or like the different horoscope apps and stuff like that? Do you, Are they relative at all? No. Not really. <laughs> I, I, I really think some, some probably they know what they're doing um, and some probably they're just doing it to especially those in cosmopolitan i i just feel like they're like oh you're gonna meet the guy and i'm like oh you are like how do we, you know like oh yeah you can predict like you can see those things but because you know you see like venus is the mm -hmm. you know it's the planet of uh, love and then if you have a conjunction venus and venus then you know that that is it's possible but then you have to look at your actual chart to see that or you're just predicting for pretty much, you know, almost everybody or, you know what I mean? Definitely, so, which is so hard. Be, it's just so general that I never read anything like that. And mm -hmm. even when people tell me that they have done a reading, an astrology reading, if they tell me it was a natal chart reading, it's not the same as doing a life purpose deeper into your uh, north node than you know, just your natal chart. Natal chart is great and you can get some understanding of who, how you were born and how the planets were aligned when you were born. But if you don't go in your life purpose, to me, in, in my opinion, and that's just my personal opinion, is like, what's the point of even knowing how you were born? <laughs> if we're not working towards what we're here for, you know? Exactly. Well, it's almost like you're getting like stagnant, like you're like more like stuck in a few years back compared to looking ahead to the future of where you should be going. Yeah. 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 Something I felt it was interesting too, whenever I was younger in school and I would meet people who had the same birthday as me or just all, and it, still even now, whenever I meet someone that has the same birthday as me, I always was like, Oh, it's so weird. Like we're just not similar people. So I mm -hmm. think going back to that horoscope of it being so general, and I'm sure, you know, people who have your same birthday and you're like, we are two totally different people. It's just kind of yeah. an interesting, interesting outlook. Yeah. I actually have a, a friend of mine and she was born in the same day. And actually she was very similar to me. Really? But totally different looking. Like you would, like she was super short and super tiny. And I'm like, you know, big and tall and, you know, but um she was very we were very similar and we would say that we are twin sisters so it's yeah it's interesting definitely the similar there will be similarities but you mm -hmm. can be totally opposite too mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's crazy yeah. we chatted before i think both of us were males in our past lifetime and we mm -hmm. had kind of chatted about the feminine energy and just as a collective kind of seeing that feminine energy shift and everything like that, especially almost as if previously in this current lifetime, we were pushing, pushing that kind of career module, whereas now collectively as females, we're kind of taking a little bit of a step back and becoming more nurturing to ourselves and everything like that for anyone who's listening and has maybe been feeling that shift or maybe just even feels conflicted from that masculine feminine energy is there anything that can kind of help understand those two energies oh yeah oh there's so much to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that comes to me right now is and what i have noticed ever since this coronavirus happened happened is there's a major invitation. Okay, the, the major invitation for everybody, the humankind, is to step into our power. Like literally reclaim our sovereignty and our birthright of being free human beings. That is the first thing. And then the second thing that I noticed even around myself, and I've talked to you about this and around my friends and everybody, is how women are asked to step into their feminine energy and men are asked to step into their masculine of course if that's their core 
um, essence, you know, because we could be women and our core essence could be masculine. You know, we just identify with masculine core essence. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure you do, your core essence is feminine, just like mine. Um, but I come from a very strong masculine background, background, especially from a post-communist country. And, you know, I'm not sure if last in the last life I was a male, but I very much um, can feel very strongly masculine energy. It's, maybe also it's because of my upbringing. And most of the lives I remember from my past life, I normally was a woman, actually. But I was always this, like very masculine like very like I'm gonna fight <laughs> you know like Joan of Arkish type of woman I'm gonna fight everybody you know and yeah most of them are kind of like that and not not all of them but yeah so um so the invitation for women are to kind of step back into their divine feminine energy and power which is you know creation flow love um we women as divine feminine energy are that we are love we are flow we are creation and men who are you know in their masculine energy whether they're not or they are they can be in their wounded masculine too just like women they can be in their wounded feminine um but wounded masculine you know could be when they feel like a failure and they feel like they're not good enough or they're not providing enough and so on. So when they step into their, like their um, mass, like divine masculine, they step into flow with their creation. Like they, they're not the creators, but they are, you know, the providers. They, you know, they're the, the action takers. So let's say, you know, you could have an idea, your husband is going to be the action taker, you know, he will be, and that's him stepping into his masculine, he will be the provider, so you can be the love and the flow in the household, Mm -hmm. and, you know, we as women, because we have been taking our power so much, we created this whole feminist movement of, oh, I want, like, my, you know, I want my rights back, but we lost we lost ourselves somehow in that because we wanted so much to be strong that we became, again, we went back into this masculine energy of, oh yeah, I can work as much as a man. No, I'm going to work more and show him that I, that is not, that is not what we wanted initially to do with this feminist movement. (laughs) And, you know, I would never, I never felt, connected to this feminist movement and I don't know why because I am a big woman power you know I'm like all women power but for some reason I always felt a disconnect with that I felt there was too much anger too much hate too much hate for men and that's not what's gonna heal us what is going to heal us and take us to the next level is come together as the collective allow men to step into their divine power as powerful human beings who are there to protect us, support us, for us to rise and blossom and create and be the love of the household, of the collective, of earth, you know? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I feel that on so many different levels, especially right now. I like my creative spark has come back to me full force Mm -hmm. and a spark that I think I've been missing for at least three or four years. I mean, I've held creative roles. So there's been some, some realm of creativity going on there, but not true passion and creativity and everything. And at the same time, the feminist movement for me, like I've always felt more, more connected to males just in terms of easier to be friends with guys compared to women and not really interested in the drama that's kind of carried along through us females. But I've never really connected with that feminist movement either. It always felt angry, like you said, just very unnatural of like, okay, I get the purpose of it, but I was like, that's just not, just doesn't make sense. So moving into realms of love makes so much more sense. And I feel like as a collective society, we've been pushing 
so hard on both realms and just to be able to finally feel the energy, that soft energy that we're supposed to feel right now. Just the thought of it is like, oh, it's like a breath of fresh air almost. Yeah, seriously. That's so true. It's kind of like we can relax. And that's the thing yes. with women. That's the thing with women and, and divine feminine energy that we are not supposed to be these hustlers, creep, you know, like go and, you know, work until you, you fall down. That is not flow. That is not allowing the flow and creativity to come to you. And that's pushing. And, um, and that's why for me, working as a trainer was, you know, hard. There was no creative, there was no flow. There was, okay, creativity because I come up with different workouts, but there was no like, oh, I'm going to be like a flowy goddess today. <laughs> no, there's no such thing. Totally. Was, uh, let's be, you know, and, and, and that is the thing is like now, like you said, we can finally relax mm -hmm. and step back into that. I feel know, that. Loving, yeah, loving energy like female energy feminine divine feminine beautiful energy of love. yeah a different corporate roles that I've held previously I was able to like hang with the males or could kind of excel faster than others and was like on that same level as them however innately it just like it was like I was forcing it like it was that masculine energy kind of taking over where I could quickly become a leader yet it never worked out because inside it was like, what is this? Why this, it, it comes so easily, but then the longevity of it, it was like something inside of me pulled me away every single time. It was, it was draining. Mm -hmm, so draining. Yeah. yeah. For women out there. So you work a lot. I love, love watching you as a spiritual teacher and everything you do with the goddess space. And we've kind of talked a lot about with North nodes and finding your purpose and kind of trying to tap into leaving the wounded and kind of tapping more into our divine energies and things like that. For anyone who is maybe just like opening up right now and wants to try to embody or get started, are there any different rituals or things that we as females can start doing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, yeah, well, what I really, I, I really love doing, um, especially recently, um, as I step deeper into my divine feminine energy, which has been a journey for me, and it will continue to be a journey for me, is um, doing the events that I do with the goddess space with my uh, soul sister and my best friend, Kate. And one of the things that I feel has been our calling to do and really healed us, our relationship, like just two feminine energies coming together and supporting the rest of the community of women and goddesses coming together um, was bringing back the circle, going back to ancient times when we used to meet in a circle. And like I have remembrance of, you know, when one woman would go through some hard times or she would need healing one would go that she would go in the middle and we would hold a circle and then just send you know love to her or healing energy to her in silence and just hold hands and then just allow her to heal herself mm -hmm. you know and we're just holding space for her that's all we do the power of women coming together from ancient times like that's one of the things that I'm so passionate about and I, I love bringing back to the community, you know, our community here in St. Pete, but now we're going virtually and we love virtually actually <laughs> because it goes so far, you know, you can be anywhere in the world and still connect. And we just had our um, circle and you attended one of our events, but never mm -hmm. a circle, right? Yeah. But you're going to attend the next one, right? Yes. <laughs> <You're saying. laughs> yes. The last one we did, you know, we always do a meditation and Kate always comes up with these meditations that takes, they, they take you and like transcend you somewhere, you know, you know, the women that were attending, they even said, I think this is the first time that I could just like actually go somewhere or actually tap into this, uh, um, you know, 
world that I've never, I was never able to. So, you know, I talked to her after and I said, how is it that even me, I don't do guided meditations because I hear the voices Mm -hmm. and it just stops me from going where I need to go. But when she does it and when we are in a circle, even if it was virtually, I get stuff. I get, I connect instantly. I don't know if it's because I know her voice, but I believe is the power of the circle, is the power of women coming together with an open heart and without judgment, with just love for one another, holding space for one another. That is healing. That is healing the wounded feminine energy of us being stepped on by the patriarchal society and us becoming more of a male masculine energy and us Mm -hmm. becoming more against one another when all we need to do is come together and love one another and all we need to do is hold space for one another and most of the women that come to our circles and now you know we're doing this um membership right now but most of them they say they just don't have anybody that they can go to and they feel alone and they feel judged every time they say something. And, you know, we are always trying to remember how, you know, to remind them how important it is to just hold space, mm-hmm. just be there, you know? And, and yeah, that's, that's what we, that's what we found so powerful. And then the other thing that we love, and I actually, I think is the thing that I love the most doing is, Uh, retreats that is a deeper next level thing that I experienced on myself and I just want to live like that forever if it would be possible (laughs) um but yeah yeah we did one retreat in Florida and we were supposed to right now we were supposed to be in Sedona doing our second one which was fully booked but we're gonna do it in August or September August August we said okay Good. So yeah, it's, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. How is it leading, leading a retreat versus attending? Like, do you find that you equally are healed and kind of receive a, like a different exchanging of energies? I do. I actually feel like when, um, when I, w- when I did the last retreat, well, the only one that we ended up doing, uh, we only had two women. So be- because maybe mm. because it was so small, so we were four all together. I felt like it was as beneficial for me as for those women, but because we were all at different levels, I feel like they felt it even deeper than I did. For them, it was literally like an awakening. For them, it was, okay, I came here, I have no clue what I'm expecting, you know, I don't know where to go, I have no clue what I'm supposed to do, and they live with this inner knowing powerful inner knowing of I know what I'm supposed to do I know how I can continue my journey on this earth plane and I have the tools that I need and I have the support of sisters that I created that I can call on anytime I need to and you know one of them actually called me during coronavirus and she was crying and I you know I just had to remind her about her power and then she was golden, you know, wow. I, I, I don't, you know, that's the thing. Like we don't have to do anything. We just have to remind each other how powerful we are. I'm not, you know, I'm not doing your healing for you. I'm not doing your work for you. I'm just reminding you how powerful you are. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, maybe because I, I can give you that confirmation, then, you know, okay, boom, this is it. Definitely. Like I heard recently that some of the best forms of, healers and teachers and workers is that it's not necessarily the ones who are actively healing you, but the ones who are reminding you of what's inside of you and really guiding you to do the work yourself Mm. is where, where the true healing takes place and that you can go to hundreds of teachers and spiritual helpers and everything like that. But until, until someone reminds you that it's inside of you, that's when you really start doing the work. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like a lot of people, even the women that come to us, sometimes they feel, I feel like they need more. And then that is when I think we're going to come up with some kind of 
guides and you know there are some people who are more lost than others and they need more guidance than others it's not that they're not as powerful they just need more guidance because they're maybe just awakening mm -hmm. so we are thinking of creating some kind of courses where we are you know giving them all this information and supporting them you know healing your inner child how to go to you know from not meditating in your life how to start meditating you know step by step and how to integrate this type of you know those rituals you know there's a ritual in you know starting your meditation there's a ritual in like you know cleansing your crystals and so on totally that would be so cool yeah. much needed yeah especially there's a lot of information out there as well that it can be at times very overwhelming too of not necessarily knowing where to look or what's what's the right thing to do um so i think some courses would be awesome for anyone who's looking to connect with you virtually where can people find you yeah so um i am a lot on instagram <laughs> um i am on diana so d a n a dot dragon d r a g a n so not like dragon but like with a's instead of o's and that that's my ig and then i'm always there and then I'm actually building my website now, which is meta, M-E-T-A dash soul dot com. I'm build, building the website as we speak and putting all my offerings there. For now, I only have my crystal water bottles and pyramids that we're selling, but I'm bringing like my offerings there too. So I'm integrating uh, my name under my our company, Meta Soul. I love it. With the crystal water bottles, I've been just recently seeing that and I don't totally understand it. The crystal actually energizes the water that you're consuming. Is that right? Yeah. So how we started this actually was um, I was guided by Archangel Metatron. We decided, you know, me and my husband has struggled ever since we started our life together with a very or lack mentality so we really had to break through like my guide Archangel Metatron would say all the time you did not come on this planet to be lacking anything you did not come here to struggle you came here to thrive you came here you have everything you need I will take care like you just have to ask and I will provide everything you need for your life very hard for me to understand how that worked and i had to do a lot of work with accepting allowing to receive allowing and trusting that everything i need is coming to me so when i started tapping into that and i started really allowing and i started really seeing the magic um he started guiding us and said you, you need to start your own business and uh, it has to do with crystals and my husband said, well, have you seen these water bottles? They have crystals in them. And I was like, oh my God, that's it. <laughs> so like we saw them and we like looked into it. And there's a whole study done by Dr. Imoto. He's a Japanese doctor hmm. who explained how he, he did this study where he would say stuff to water like, I hate you. Hmm. And he would say stuff to water like, I love you. And the, like whenever he would say, I hate you, the water would look all like the molecules of water would look all crazy. And then to the water that he would say, I love you, it would look like a, you know, like a snowflake or it would have like sacred geometry forms. So that was just the power of the word to water. And then wow. he did water with crystal inside and water without crystal. And the water with crystal, it's the same sacred geometry. And then the water without crystal can have sacred geometry, but not as powerful or it could also be distortion everywhere, you know. There's the there's whole study on that. It's, it's fascinating. And oh, cool. Yeah. So when we, you know, we heard the call, um, we connected with um, a person that actually makes them and we just like you know we just it all came to us it was just a pure manifestation um it, it was just beautiful and powerful and then you know we were wondering about the logo and i created my our logo 
three years prior to starting the company. I created this eye with like a Metatron's cube inside. It's a painting I probably have around here or somewhere, but it's never, I never finished it. Mm. So I think I didn't finish it because I wasn't sure where it's going next. And I guess it was supposed to go on our logo. <laughs> so that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the crystals infuse the water with their healing properties. So Mm. you know water is already life like wa- water is one of the most powerful elements on the planet after love love is the first most powerful second is water um so if you're going to add the power of crystal to the power of water is is just taking it to the next level it makes so much sense yeah that's so cool i'm gonna have to try that yeah. Well, before we close out today, I just like to end our episodes with some fun loving your own soul questions, which are just some kind of on the spot questions just to let our listeners get to know you just a little bit deeper <laughs> than yeah. they already do. So, do you have a favorite animal or a spirit animal? Huh. Yeah, you know, I always get that question and I always have to think about it. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like I, I feel like I love all animals. I am very connected with uh, the cat, um, like mm-hmm. cat energy. I have a cat and I love her. Um, she doesn't like me as much as I love her, but we're good. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I, I really feel like I love animals. And as, as as I started opening my heart to loving overall, I feel like I love even more animals. Like before I would like kill a spider. Now I'm like, Oh, if I can save it, maybe we can do that. Mm -hmm. Totally. (laughs) And um, I do connect with the dolphin energy a lot. Mm. And I, yeah. And I feel like that's one of the reasons why I have to be so close to the water because I just love dolphin energy. Dolphins are such fun creatures. I love them. They're so cool. What is the craziest thing you've ever dreamed about? God. (laughs) Loaded question. I I have had so many crazy dreams, like even lately. Okay, I'm going to tell you one very interesting, actually, that I started. I was journaling. I'm actually mentoring with Kyra. I'm I'm not sure if you know her. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh, she's, she's amazing. Um, we can talk about her more yeah. <laughs> another time, but she gives us these journaling prompts. And one was, one is about how Christian, you know, how Christianity, maybe how, how religion impacted your life growing up. I, I was, as I was journaling this, I remember this dream that I had that I was going to school and my school, every, I was probably, I was seven or eight and I looked about that same age in my dream and in this school it was the lights were dim and it was all like the lights were almost no light there but a little bit and then I saw this opening on in the floor and you know somebody told me or I felt the need to go in that under the floor on that hall and there I go in and there was Jesus uh, teaching kids in a circle something and it was again it was dim light but he was just glowing and I think that was the only light that was there actually like him emanating this light and he looked at me and he just told me telepathically I as I was writing this two days ago when I was journaling I remember that he didn't he didn't move his mouth he told me telepathically to sit in the circle there was an empty spot there for me and I just sat there and that that's all I remember but that dream stayed with me ever since and it was literally like a real thing that's powerful yeah Yeah. that's a good that's a big dream yeah (laughs) so I have other crazier ones but like really crazy you know where I feel like um I'm just like battling some different beings and I'm getting trapped and then I have to escape and you know (laughs) yeah Yeah. dreams are so wild they're so interesting do you have a favorite photo of yourself you know the first thing that came to me was uh, my baby photo I can show show it to you if you want yeah (laughs) I I love that after 
because I have to look for it. But yeah, yeah. Like, like this baby photo of me, like I have these big eyes and super cute. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I love that. Yeah. And then final question, when did your exploration to diving deeper into your own soul first begin and how has it evolved since then? So I think that, you know, every time, I love the way you ask this question, actually, um, because every time somebody asks me, I have, like, I, I try to find the timeline and I stop somewhere. Mm-hmm. But the way you ask me, I realize it's been ever since I was born. Mm, amazing. Yeah. Because if you think about it, we, we, we actually did that ever since we were born. Because when I remember, you know, growing up with my mother astrology and she would just give me all this and I would just, you know, try to absorb all this information because I wanted more. I wanted to know more. I knew there's more to what we just see, you know? Mm -hmm. You Um, had that like innate curiosity immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, I wanted to say when you first asked, Um, or you started the question I wanted to say when I met my husband because when I met my husband I knew that he I've met him before so I all I wanted to know is like when did we meet before so that's why I think my whole like past life journey started because we wanted to know how did we meet before and how is that we know each other like when we met we knew that we know each other we got married after four months so we definitely knew (laughs) Totally. Um, That's so amazing. I didn't realize that with your relationship. Yeah. Yeah. We got married. He proposed to me after three months and wow. we were talking about marriage after a month. Like we knew that we, we are going to be together. Yeah. When you know, so, you know. Exactly. It's a, such a cliche, but it's the truest, the realest thing ever. <laughs> totally. I love that. Yeah. amazing thank you so much for doing this episode this was so much fun truly a gift yeah thank you for having me i loved it it was so much fun for me oh my goodness what an episode wow that was that was amazing. She is such a special soul. Her understanding and teachings of life and spiritual realms and the messages that she receives are unlike anything other. So you are all truly received a gift in getting to learn something from her today. As I mentioned earlier, if you've enjoyed your time here with me today, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you do so, simply screenshot it and email me proof to lovingyourownsoul at gmail.com. In exchange, I will send you my free plant-based recipe ebook filled with 25 amazing recipes, everything from breakfast to lunch, dinner, salad dressings, and even my homemade cashew milk. In addition, between now and May 31st, I will also be giving one lucky winner a gift basket filled with all of my favorite brands in celebration of the launch of this new podcast. The gift basket is filled with things from Hum Nutrition, Pure Vita Bracelets, Liquid IV, Four Sigmatic, and so many more of my favorites. It is amazing. So I hope the right person will win this gift basket here at the end of the month. All in all, this is all simply my way of saying thank you and in exchange hoping to pay forward the amazing inspirational energies I've gleaned from the podcast space to hopefully exchange and inspire others with this new journey. Thank you all so much for tuning in with me and I look forward to exploring with you again soon. Mm -hmm.